Good evening and welcome to this special presentation on NDTV, which is coming to you from one of the topmost commerce and business college in the country. We are at the SRCC. And this is, uh, we thought, you know, since morning, you've been listening to the industry captains, the politicians, government, opposition talking about the budget, what they think about the budget. We thought we'll bring you for a master class with the Gen Z here. These uh, students, in fact, uh, have analyzed, gone through the budget. They are the ones, those who are, uh, uh, you know, going on and they, will, they are also a, a, going through the impact of this budget, not only on their future, but also the hidden, in fact, as they say, the, uh, you know, the God is in the details. So they are going through the details of the budget, have very intelligent, smart questions and also their analysis. So we'll get to that. And we'll also try and understand uh, from, in fact, our guest here uh, about what do they make of this budget. So you just, you know, got you out of the studio to this masterclass at the SRCC. And what is the Gen Z? The young people are thinking about the budget 2023, an important budget for the Modi government as they head into the election. Yeah, let me also introduce you. Uh, at this uh, moment, Professor Simrit uh, Kaur, Principal, SRCC, ma'am, welcome. We also have Mr. Akash Jindal, uh, economist, who is also Good joining time. us. And uh, all of these lovely students of the SRCC, can we have a round of applause for all of you as well, please? Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me start, uh, ma'am, by asking you, uh, overall, what number would you give the budget? It, if, if you were checking Ms. Ms. Uh, Nirmal Sita Raman's paper today, out of 10, how much does he get? And what is the what are the you know hits and misses that you see in this budget? If you can tell us three uh, you know big points uh, of the budget and three misses that you thought should have been there. First, uh, as a teacher and judging Nirmala Sita Ramanji, I would not do when the finer prints are not there. I have the confidence in the finance minister. So rather than giving the numbers, I would say it's an excellent budget with a grade of A plus. Okay. And of course, the details are going to come a little later. Now. How do we analyze the budget and on what parameters are we grading? That is very important without sure. reading the finer prints. Number one, we must understand the background to which this budget has come from. The past couple of years were very difficult years, not just for the Indian economy, but globally. We have all come through the COVID-19 crisis. Across globes, uh, Western world, Middle East, South Asia, the growth rates were coming down. This was while we were just recovering and reviving from the COVID-19, we saw the Russia-Ukraine war. Absolutely. And resultantly, the implications it had on the commodity prices, primarily food, fuel and fertilizers. So under the circumstances, when we are seeing inflation going up and then comes this budget, how do we take it forward? As an economist, I would always say we look for those projects which are sustainable. We need growth which is not a short-term growth, it has to be a long-term growth, which is also inclusive and which is also sustainable. Right. And I compliment the finance minister for addressing these issues very well. On the growth front, the foremost thing which comes to the mind is what has been done to capital expenditure on infrastructure, primarily roads, railways. Most of the empirical literature is robust, stating that the multipliers are highest when you invest in infrastructure projects. Okay. So a big thumbs up when your capital expenditure goes up substantially, I think it's gone up by 33% and even as a percentage of GDP, it, has, it is a very stark threshold interceptional shift. Right. When it comes to inclusiveness, I think the whole budget, if you see the storyline, inclusive to whom? Inclusive to the vulnerable and the marginalized sections of the population. And this is not necessarily the economically weaker sections, but also who are vulnerable, maybe because of being a gender bias right, or there right. could be a digital divide. There are social caste systems within the country. There are rural urban divides. How have we addressed this? If you take up the storyline in the economic budget, uh, economic survey, which has also penetrated in the budget, there are seven pillars. So starting from agriculture, you've made the farmer inclusive. You go to the women's sector, you've made the women inclusive. You go to the youth, startups are being inclusive, MSMEs. So I think the inclusiveness part okay. has also been handled. Finally, what about the sustainability? Here I speak about green energy. If we have to reduce the carbon emissions globally, 
what do we do at the Indian level? Several steps have been made, taken to make this economy cleaner, greener and bluer. Okay, so that's the uh, big headline or uh, the, you know, summing up uh, the, the big picture as far as yes. the budget is concerned. But, yes. uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Jindal, the fact is that uh, a lot of people and especially the young, those who are in this college, uh, in a year or two, they'll be in the job market. Uh, has enough been done? The one criticism of the government in the last few years, and of course it, it, had to, it was multiplied because of the COVID situation, was unemployment, uh, you know, generation of new employment. Whether even the private sector was able to generate that kind of employment because we've seen the government sector in, in, you know, in, in that sense was shrinking. Jobs, government jobs were shrinking. Has this budget addressed that issue? Yeah. Firstly, you were asking about the marks. Now, I, Akash Jindal, give it 9.5 out of 10. According to me, it's a wonderful, fantastic, growth-oriented budget. Of course, ma'am is very right. We have to wait for the fine print. But whatever I am saying or analyzing is on the basis of the speech which I have seen on TV of Honorable Finance Minister. So, fine print, of course, we all have to wait. Now, your question is very specific to unemployment. Yes, we are going through severe unemployment. December 2022, in case we see the data, unemployment is figure is more than 8%. And particularly, urban unemployment is more than 10%. So unemployment is a huge issue. And you are very right. Corona has to be blamed for that. And Russia-Ukraine war. Because Corona, every economy was impacted, including India. And we were trying to recover from Corona that we had Russia-Ukraine war. Right. So one after another global issue came and Russia-Ukraine war has negative impact on all leading economies. Now to talk about economy like US, the role model economy, the biggest economy in the world, they had two quarters of negative GDP growth. China in a quarter they exhibited only 0.4% GDP growth. Right. UK and Germany, the sixth and fourth largest economy in the world, they are expected to grow. They are expected to uh, demonstrate negative GDP growth in 2023. So when the entire world is impacted, some unemployment has to be there. Now, would this budget give employment? Yes. I think this budget would provide lots and lots of jobs. Because CapEx, 10 lakh crore rupees in CapEx. Capital expenditure, what does that mean? Infrastructure, roads, highways, buildings, plant, machinery. This would mean massive job generation because right. this would have a multiplier impact so i think this is a great thing 10 lakh crore rupees of capital expenditure all the young people sitting here uh, they, uh maybe they may become cas mbas or other children who may become engineers architects i think there will be jobs for them not only in the coming years but okay. for 10 years it's a 10 year vision document 10 year growth document this is a great so, decision to infuse so that much 10 year of growth and, and, and a, a larger vision is what the experts are telling us. But, you know, I'm very interested in what you guys also think because uh, the, for the new generation, the Gen Z, you have, you have a lot of, lots of notes. You're making me nervous with all these notes. But uh, anyway, what's your name? And tell me one thing. Uh, a lot of young people keep talking about cryptocurrency. It's a very buzzword, right? In this, bu in this budget... Uh, Ms. Sita Raman did not once speak about cryptocurrency or anything, uh, you know, related to that. Is that something that you were expecting? Were you hoping that she would say something? Yes. Hello, sir. My name is Tejas. And uh, being a crypto enthusiast, we were expecting that the crypto tax rate will be decreased as well as the TDS. We were expecting that at present it is 1%. But uh, if we are uh, keeping TDS for the sake of tracing the transaction, we can reduce the TDS to 0.001% as well. So it was expected. And about the regulation front, I believe that uh, more constructive policies were expected on the regulation front of the crypto market. Okay, so some disappointment there as far as the crypto enthusiasts and a lot of questions. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, so I think everyone would agree that overall this budget did consider a lot of issues that were expected and uh, it is a very well formulated budget. But something I personally found missing was if I speak of the fintech industry, a lot of the industry leaders in that sense were expecting some major announcement related to digital currency or some budget allocation that would give it a boost, yeah. especially considering the talks about it in the past year. 
बट देर वो इज नो मैंशन ऑफ डिजिटल करेंसी एंड मोस्ट ऑफ दी अनाउंसमेंट्स रिलेटेड टू फिनटेक वो रिलेटेड टू डॉक्यूमेंट एक्सेस एंड ईज ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंटेशन मैनेजिंग बट नो क्लियर मैंशन और नो स्टैंड वो इज गिवन टू डिजिटल वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट Corona and plus the U- Russia-Ukraine war has dampened the economy. But we see the picture before that; it was also not nice. Uh, Demonetization literally caused a big blunder to the economy. And even today, our population has the largest share of malnutrition and poverty. And with this, if we see the economic survey projections, that the uh, later decade uh, growth will be between 6.5 to 7 percent. Yes. But this is not enough to increase this share of employment and uh, to give growth to the youth. important uh, mr mr general you know uh, as i said while the industry experts will always be 9 out of 10 but these are some young students those who have also have their concerns fintech industry they were expecting much more to come out of it uh, not many announcements uh, there a lot of talk about startups but then we have also seen in the last uh, you know 6 months or so not just globally but in india as well very big startups there have been massive layoffs as well sustainability of the startups is also something that uh, a lot of young people are worried about yeah now i'll answer it one by one as far as crypto concern uh, currency is concerned yes i'm uh, there with these kids cryptocurrency <laughs> the taxation should have been lesser because many of the youngsters have invested in cryptocurrency and many of the youngsters have invested their first salary so it's important plus the crypto market also needs to be regulated because we need to protect the investors also as of now it's not regulated just like we have sebi in stock market irda in insurance rera in real estate i want crypto market also to be regulated so that the investors should be protected now somebody asked a young student asked about digital rupee digital rupee let me inform beta already pilot project has been launched right now on digital rupee you need do no need not do allocation of money digital rupee is a procedural issue so i am quite sure the digital rupee story has started it would continue functioning because i don't think you need allocation of money on that now fintech and massive layoffs yes russia ukraine war is the reason that's why we are seeing globally many of the companies coming out with layoffs and russia ukraine war has impacted the global uh economy very very negatively okay when us has been impacted china has been impacted i have already given you figures of uk and germany so i think and uh, and russia ukraine war was continue in december we had again china reeling under corona okay. so global problem one after one Ma- have been impacting fintech but also uh, you know many experts are also saying that this is some sort of uh, standardization or you know actual realization which is now setting in as far as global tech com- uh, companies are concerned during the covid pandemic a lot of over hiring was done now they are trying to rationalize uh, as far as their hirings are concerned and that is why we are seeing a lot of job losses but like one of your students said year on year and this is what the government's critics also say if you compare the last 9 uh, years and and, and you know, let's say 9 uh, years before that the average growth in terms of gdp as well doesn't seem to be hitting the mark where people were expecting post 2014 undoubtedly <clears throat> but to expect the gdp growth rates to be robust in an environment where many countries have seen a negative dip in the growth rates i think it is not a logical question uh, we were anticipating cuts in our growth rates despite the expansionary monetary and fiscal policy stance which the government and the central bank took during the covid time and i think the very fact that we maintained a growth rate of 6 to 7 yeah. is commendable and even the world bank and the united nations have acknowledged publicly in their writings that the kind of poverty anti poverty strategies which were adopted during covid were so well targeted and there was practically no leakage and we were probably one of the few countries which emerged out after the covid without increasing the poverty levels now the question is on unemployment you increase expenditure on manrega people get employed i is this the kind of an employment that you're looking for so we do not want employment which is uh, at low levels okay. uh, the kind of employment we want is a skilled employment generation more so in the formal sector of the economy right until that time please remember union budgets are always a yearly plan we don't expect it to do miracles in terms of a 20 year plan sure we are on the right path this is the most important and also importantly we have to maintain our fiscal prudence Absolutely. and we have maintained the trend of reducing fiscal deficits okay 
let's let's sir let me take a few more questions it will be interesting uh, you know what everybody all hands are raised let me first try and uh, get some questions from the back uh, as well there a lot of students uh, there what's your name my name is saket goenka tell me saket what were the highlights for you at the budget and uh, for a young person did you find because uh, one of the seven things that the uh, for uh, the finance minister spoke about was the focus on youth was it enough in this budget for the youth uh, first of all i think the budget was quite comprehensive but i have two concerns the first is related to education because as you know india is one of the most youngest country in the whole world so our expenditure on education is less than 4% and in developed countries and countries which are of high gdp in, in, as compared to india are still spending more than 6% of their gdp in education okay. uh, so you, on one side you want to promote youth on one side you are not increasing the uh, increasing the expenditure on education at which, level exactly which will be the basic building block as far as our informed economy is concerned education is one concern what's your name uh, my name is nishya agarwal and i think it was a very very comprehensive budget okay. overall uh, but one of my concerns again is in the uh, ed- sector of education i think uh, the there has to be proper implementation of the new education policy in the new education policy uh, new curriculum has been introduced for all the higher education yes. institutes but sufficient infrastructure has to be provided for the same sufficient infrastructure for education to be for education ma'am what is your name hi my name is bhavika dhamija and well my question is that since like our finance minister claimed that india has grown out to be one of the fifth largest economy in the world however still very less allocation has been provided to basic amenities such as uh, health care and considering the pandemic situation yes. also the education sector has been provided quite less allocation so that's a matter of concern so one more me. on education last one and then i go and uh, get an answer yeah so in the budget there was a national uh, digital library and also there was a mention about the centers training centers so they are putting training centers but what about the non availability of the teachers so largely these four questions and uh, let me take it uh, uh, to Uh, you know somebody who is uh, in the education sector uh, largely uh, these students have been speaking about you know they said a the allocation for education sector as uh, we, you know we already have surpassed china in in terms of uh, n- the numbers that we are we the indians and we are a young population so to like you were talking about skill jobs where will those skill jobs come from or that uh, training come from if people are not educated so they are not very happy about the kind of allocation that has been done on education and number two like that uh, young girls a uh, lady said that uh, there uh, what about having more teachers what about having better infrastructure when it comes uh, to education and of course uh, you know in even in the health sector the budget allocation has hasn't increased despite last two years we have seen complete focus of every country only on one thing that was health and pandemic i agree with my students uh, education is a very important sector and in economics we call this as a classic case of a public merit good education and health is something largely traditionally is to be fulfilled by the state but over time we have seen that the government if it is unable to increase its expenditure on education it is promoting private participation both in the education as well as the health sector the advantage is that if the government does not have its own resources at least it is trying to bring in the private sector but there are concerns about commercialization of uh, education if there's a private sector hmm. but my point at this would be let there be competition at least you know very uh, one quick answer on the tax regime it, it's a very important point that uh, that gentleman made the fact is that we are the new tax regime has been there for the last couple of years the government uh, it seems has not found many takers of the new tax regime and in this budget there has been a considerable push uh, towards the new tax regime is this in a way discouraging people to save like the old tax regime and that he was saying that you are discouraging savings you are giving a flat uh, you know dis- uh, reduction of sorts as far as the new tax regime is concerned and is it more attractive now than it was uh, that you know compared to the old tax regime I think it's very important to understand that uh, most of the middle class was anticipating relaxations on the tax structure. The last time it happened was probably 1617 or 1718. So the very fact that the government has come up by increasing the slabs and giving relaxation was anticipated and there is no harm to take this forward. Yes. 
if it is reducing savings there are other ways if because there could be a trade off there yeah. could be a reallocation but i'm very sure there are other methods to fill up that gap if at all this do arise and it's important for the students to understand that the moment you have your fiscal deficits which are high yeah. the equation of your gdp clearly shows you borrow for the fiscal deficits either from the your saving surplus or from rest of the world okay. so the very fact that you have curtailed your fiscal deficits to narrower numbers means we are comfortable even if our savings are not as robust as they could be right. so we remain comfortable from that front plus our revenue receipts are increasing so substantially that government is in a comfortable space okay uh, i've come to the end uh, you know as far as uh, this presentation is concerned uh, quick uh, questions but in the end you heard the experts giving their overview and their marks as far as this budget is concerned i'm interested in what you guys think so let's do a voice vote is as it usually happens in the parliament so how many of you think that this budget uh, you know has met the expectations if you are satisfied with the budget you'll say yes if you are not you'll say no so let's see so how many of you are satisfied with the budget yes yes how many are of you are not satisfied with this budget well at least in this house the nose have it the nose have it but <laughs> let's uh, also understand ladies and gentlemen despite uh, the the current global problems the uh, challenges globally that we are seeing india still remains a bright spot and also remember this is an important election here yeah. one small thing yes kabhi kisi ko mukammal jahan nahi milta bilkul sahi baat hai zameen to kabhi aasman nahi milta everything which you aspire you can't get government has it got its limitations ek limit there is a limited amount of allocation which has to be done so like so in the end how, sir, how intelligently say, you allocate is... that limited resources and our talented finance minister nirmala sitaraman ji okay. she has allocated the limited resources in a very very nice manner so it's a big yes for my out of time ma'am please you go ahead two uh, options yeah. satisfactory and not satisfactory, not satisfactory. excellent to the ini maybe the ones who were quite <laughs> wanted to say in that well, category let me tell you and to the credit of your students nobody was <laughs> quite everybody had okay. an opinion so that's a good thing about all your students all right that's all the time that we have in this uh, edition and like uh, sir said uh, i will just end it thoda hai thode ki zarurat hai it is after every budget thank you so much for tuning in on this special presentation on ndtv thank you guys can i have a big round of applause for all of you thank you you've thank been a lovely you audience so thank, thank you so much, much. you really are that it's so thank you so much, much.